And we're live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the What Did He Said podcast. It's your boy Chingo Bling. Today we have Ali Sadiq. What up, bro? Man, what's good, man? Man, we got a, a comedy legend, a, a, a <laughs> OG in the building, representing the H-Town comedy scene. You've seen him on Comedy Central and all types of places. Man. Midtown Barbershop. <laughs> midtown bell bonds it's, it's been, it's a lot of midtown yo we were talking uh before we get into you know how you started in comedy which you know i'm i'm, I'm curious to just hear the whole journey but uh, we're talking off air about what the hell's been going on with this corona shit and uh, i was telling you how like all my california dates got wiped out how, how did it affect you man um I was booked from 42 weeks. We just going to say that. We just going to say 42 weeks. I was taking two weeks off, three weeks off in July. I was working every weekend up until July. I was going to take three weeks off to hang out with my family. After them three weeks, I was booked all the way up to New Year's. So all of that is. 42 out of the 52 weeks. Up in the air. All that, like, everything is up in there, like. They they trying to reschedule some some will be in twenty twenty two like it's, oh it's, a, it's a weird it's a weird thing man to lose that much revenue that fast like and it's not it's not even it's not your fault it's not the club's fault it's, everybody's not, going through it yeah and luckily you know you a saver and you you live in your means that's the biggest thing living within my means. So we comfortable, but I know um, in about, I'm going to say about four more months, I'm going to be like, mm, I don't like it. Uh. <laughs> I'm, all, hey, I'm already not comfortable. <laughs> I'm, past, I'm past uncomfortable. Uh, but it's all good. Uh, like I was saying, our, our, all our Cali shows got wiped out. A lot of them got just super pushed back. But um, that's when I started, you know, we pivoted. What we did was look. We're in the state of Texas, the great state of Texas. We got Laredo, Victoria, your Corpus Christi, your Amarillo's, like San Angelo's and, and everything. So we said, you know what? All these markets that we've been, I, I'd hate to say neglecting, we haven't been able to get back out to Del Rio, Eagle Pass and all that. But now is the time to uh, back to the grassroots, how, you know, how I started. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. I'm, I'm back to grinding in so many aspects, but... I can only do so much because of my agency. Mm. So UTA is really trying to find all of these shows um, and putting out this word. And I'm doing a lot of more, a lot more um, voiceover work Great. and things of that nature. And then I just record a new album, so I'm a, that'll be out in a couple of weeks. Um, the missing piece, and so you know I'm just constantly working. Do you know our first interaction? Like how we, <laughs> the the open mic thing? No. Nah. What, what was it? This is when you were still um doing rapping, music. Okay. Doing music. And it was a shirt with me and you on the shirt together. Remember when people was making all making these shirts? No shit. They was making these shirts and they were just pressing people up and people had so my boy called me and was like, yo, <laughs> you on this shirt with this um Hispanic rapper. I'm like I want a shirt with mm -hmm. and he sent me the shirt I say oh this Jingo man and he said Cause we had took a picture somewhere and somebody yeah. took the picture and pressed it on all it, it, I think the shirts was always black, black so they were bootlegging with, us yeah wow. and you had the ostrich boots with the Nike check on yeah. the side <laughs> and that shirt was going around and I was like I like I don't even, that was the first time I met him and then somebody took a picture of us and put us on a shirt. That's hilarious. Uh, where, do you know where we met? Where that was? That picture? was at a car show. No shit. Yeah. Like one of the like Magnificos or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. One of the Magnificos is where we met. Wow. Yeah, I, was host, I was doing something for the box. Okay. I was hosting one of the stages. <laughs> oh, that's what's up. Yeah. Man, I had no idea. I, I thought the first time we met was when uh, uh, this dude told me, hey, man, they got this open mic over there called uh, Fat Boys. And I was screen printing some shirts in, uh, in our warehouse at the time. Uh, and uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just got to print a couple shirts. I'll go over there. So I'm over there looking raggedy. I, I literally was just starting in stand up. And I've told this story so many times because, uh, you know, bombing is how you learn. 
And um, you, you, I'll let you describe that Fat Boys. It was called Fat Boys, right? Yeah, the Fat, Fat Boys, Boys Room. Six Ten. Yeah, that was that was a what I I used to call it the mosh pit. So you, it's a it's a it's a restaurant. It's a restaurant with a nice bar on the side. So it's conducive to what we were doing. And the stage was like this oval stage right in the middle of the floor. And it's people all the way around you. Like mm -hmm. every direction is people. But they turned up to the max. Like they they yeah, yeah. ready. They ready. It's, it's like a sports bar. Like, you know, hot wings and it's. it's hot wings yeah. margaritas and margaritas and stand and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, and that was. And they, I'm talking about people were ready. Just they was always ready because I was always turned up in this room because this this was the first time that I had been in a room in the hood. Like they had, the hood had always had to come to other places to see me. Like, oh, we're going to go to Just Joking. Um, Which was, was where? Where was Just Joking? Just Joking. Located. That's the club I started in. That's on Richmond. Okay. That was on Richmond, man. Right across from this, this club called Cloud Nine. But Just Joking was there first. It's, I think it's a... Um, it's a cantina down that way. Um, what's on the street? Coco Loco, not Coco Loco. What is the T Town? No. So it's it's Richmond and Fondren area, mm -hmm. in between Fondren and Gessner, right mm -hmm. across from the Popeyes is where is where I started at just at just joking comedy cafe, um, owned by this uh, this lady named Alice, and that's when I probably met everybody. Um, it it okay. So this is how crazy this room was. Bruce Bruce was the host for a long time. On hey, just joking, yeah. On wow. this, Jay was the was the original host. Mike Epps was the host. Um, who else was there? Um, it was so many people that used to host that room, but everybody who's anybody came through. That's why I met D Ray Davis, Tony Schofield, um, Earthquake. You know, I met um, Rodney Rodney Winfield. I met I met a lot of legends in that particular place so um other than that i was at this spot called the horn which is another spot on richmond down the street from um tv johnny's um club right across from david busters so other than that i had a i had two rooms downtown i had the red cat and they've always had to come out of the neighborhood mm -hmm. to see me oh but this was right in the in the, in the heart <laughs> of the hood and people would the happy hour, I think this is the problem. People don't understand why they were so turned up. The happy hour started at three. Mm. And the show didn't start to eight. Mm -hmm. So we doing five dollar margaritas, um, three dollar <laughs> shots, you know, and they started at they start at three ten drinking. So when by the time you get there at eight, I'm going on first, then everybody else up after that is like Man, they, these people are drunk. I'm like, I know, right? <laughs> They've been drunk. They've been drunk since six. You know what yeah, <laughs> and then and the way I went into the the lions den is uh this cat was like, hey man, uh they they got this open mic over there, fat boys, and I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll show up. I I pull up and um I saw GT uh, DJ, and I'm like, oh hey, what's up, man? He's like, hey, what's up, man? You trying to get up? I was like, yeah, man, I'm just starting. I'm just you know seeing what's going on and. I think I might have seen E Green there. I'm, I'm trying to remember who all was there, but Bryce I didn't. I didn't know e anybody. Green. He Bryson yeah. might have been there. I didn't know anyone. And uh, GT's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get you on right now. Ali, come here. And uh, that's my best friend. And uh, I've known him forever. I've known GT forever. And uh, I said, hey, hey, but you know, I'm learning, and I want to be incognito. Just, just say like Pedro. Just say, you know, put me up as Pete Pedro or something. He's like, all right, hey Ali, Chingo Bling want to get up. <laughs> you, you, and then uh, Ali's like. You've known him from the rap game, you know. Today he's trying something different. Hey, or something, something hands me the mic. I'm like, hey, uh, uh, yeah, I'm dressed crazy because I was, uh, how y'all do it? And everyone's just like, yeah, pass the, uh, hey man, pass the hot sauce, ketchup. Da, da, da. They're just like, man, forget this dude. I was like, yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> all right, guys. And it was probably a world record of like getting the hell off stage. Man, I'm sure I got the record. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's some other people. Like you was up there for at least five minutes. Not even though. Not, okay, I was I was giving something on it, but it's some people who have been like they didn't boo you though. They just they was ignored like, the shit out of me. They was just like, hey, okay, he knew. He um, didn't come in the room. Yeah, yeah. Yo, I need another margarita. They, yeah, see yeah, when they yeah. start talking louder than what you talking. <laughs> but it's some people that came up and it was like I've I've seen 
some real cocky comics that grown were, men that were cry. that already had been doing comedy very very cocky mm -hmm. of all of all ethnic backgrounds get slaughtered in that room and then the next person go up and kill and they like what happened see this this is a this is a particular type of room you have to talk a lot faster than you want to talk mm -hmm. they only accepted the slowness from me because they know that's how i am but everybody else they wanted come on yeah hurry come up. on with it mm -hmm. that, that room was insane man the horn was the horn i think the horn was the that one of my easiest rooms but that's how i came up i came up in a room that was that was a oh, can you silence that computer please i can't i came up in a room that was crazy just joking i started just joking um on apollo night it was a thursday night all the colleges were in there tsu u of h prairie view and they came they literally came to boo and, and, it, and it wasn't even like a comedy thing. It was what they came. It was everything. You was rap. This is where every rapper out of Houston started their career. Mm. Like Slim, Bun, um, At the Bun, Bun, Bun was Bun was before this. Yeah, yeah. I, I just been knowing Bun so long. Slim, um, Roll. Um, Mike Jones, Powell, Chameleon Air. If you was in that in that group of rapping, you came to Just Joking, and Just Joking was a slaughterhouse for performers. People would juggle, people would sing gospel mm. songs just wow. to make it through. And I was a comic. Terry Gross was the host of this room, and this room was the most. I'm talking about. You had like thirty seconds to get it going. Or they would just boo you. They, I'm talking about just, and it's not like one person booing. It's like they, it's like they had a routine of how they started booing. And then you had this one dude named Pookie. He'd be sitting in the back. And when this, when this, when you think, just when you think it's over, he holler out, "Get your bitch ass off stage!" You like his signature. As you already, they're walking. like, guys, that's just Pookie. That's just Pookie being Pookie. Yeah, man. People knew. People knew it. Like they knew, <laughs> like as you walking off stage, then you hear the 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 pin. They they he he buttoned it up with with get your ass. Ah, uh -huh, get your bitch ass off the stage! <laughs> Damn. And you didn't know who he was because it was like he just said it's just this loud voice coming from the dark, and you never knew who it was. So once like two months in, I started. I was I became the co-host of this room with Terry, and I figured out who Pookie was. Because he would he would be sitting by the bar, and somebody be getting off stage. This lady just finished singing a gospel song. Oh, and Pookie, I'm I'm just happy to be standing there, and I just hear out of nowhere, "Get your bitch ass off stage!" I say, "Oh, that's the mother right here." <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, Pookie, and and like he's been he um he used to come to the horn. I mean, he used to come to um Fat Boys, mm. and but he was oh he old enough. I might have been one of Pookie's victims that so night. He just be like, he just be sitting there shaking his head like. And I was like, all right, guys, I'm gonna get my bitch ass on the stage. <laughs> it's weird, man. But how long you been doing it now? Uh, man, I'm like five and a half years, and uh, I must say, I've come a long way from I Fat mean, Boys. You um you've done a lot in five and a half years. Yeah, yeah. More than most people, in general, five and. Hey, a half man, years. when when the rap game is is fucked up. You 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 focus. <laughs> You're like, hey, this is it. We're switching lanes. You're hitting at Texas again. You have San Antonio this weekend and Houston. Um, yes, yeah, San Antonio. Um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Two shows on Friday and Saturday. One show um on Thursday, and we're doing a matinee show for Father's Day at the Houston Improv. So Sunday at the Improv, and then um two weekends in a row, man. Then I have Helium's in Indiana. Um. Indianapolis or in, what city? In, yeah, Indianapolis, okay. Indiana. Um, which is weird because we've been we constantly keep rescheduling this, and I'm like, I want to go, but then I'm like, if they called and canceled it, I wouldn't be upset. I'm like, yeah. I'm getting used to being at home, man. Yeah. You know, after all these years of not being home, this is the longest I've been home in 21 years. You know, so, but. You know when you on a tour and you was i was happy i was making 
great money and now I'm 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 acclimated to being home. You know, my garden is growing. I know as soon as I get back on the road, my garden gonna get not water. Yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah. Not, I'm not gonna say dead. I'm gonna yeah. just it's gonna be very thirsty. Well let me know, man. I'm I'll be here. <laughs> 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 I'll drop by. Yeah, I think I saw one time on Instagram you were showing uh, all the different things. Like you, you were just walking along. You're like, "Hey, we got this, and we got that." What kind of stuff you have in your garden? Man, I have collard greens. I have um, eggplant, squash, zucchini, cucumber. Two different types of cucumbers. Um, two different types of squash. Um, Japanese cucumbers. You know, we have um, red, what purple basil. We have. Um, purple bell peppers, green bell peppers, red bell peppers. I've never seen a purple bell yeah. pepper. Jalapeno, jalapeno peppers, um, banana peppers. What else? Cotaloo, um, bl- um, purple hull peas, black eyed peas, and lettuce. And two, you got the whole H E B over there. Two different types of lettuce. I didn't even know. You, I don't think people know how many different types of lettuce it is until you start growing it. Oh, you won't. Buttercrisp lettuce and arugula. And you're like, nah, I just take buttercrisp. Buttercrisp sound like it tastes really good, but arugula tastes better. It's weird. It's yeah, a yeah. it's a thing, man. Just getting out. Oh, and okra. Yeah. Okra, I have tomatoes out there, like one, two, three, four, four different types of um tomatoes. So Yeah, I got in the garden too during Corona because there wasn't shit else to do. I just got little peppers and Everything else is taking its time. Cilantro is about this big. Oh, I have cilantro. Yeah. I have a man. I, I have a ton of cilantro and parsley, basil, regular basil, um, and tomati. The tomatito tomatoes is giving me the the blues. They they like they budding, but they not doing nothing. And I'm fighting with snails and cutworms and like I just ordered these wa- these little wasps that kill everything. A it's, wasp. Yes, they little bitty wasps. You, they come in a tab on a tab, and you hang them on the branches. Cover like five hundred feet each tab, and they when they hatch, they kill everything that's out there eating your stuff. <laughs> what the it's, um, it's these other worms. I just ordered. Um, so you got ne- security on your garden, guys. Ne- nematoid nematoid worms that you that you mix up. They like this little small parasite worm that they eat everything that's on the ground any type of grub or uh larva they eat all man that. where do you find this stuff man you got to go online and it, it's this organic <laughs> place that's, 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 that's <laughs> send you they got everything they and my boy i sent my boy over there to get the get these same worms because he was having problems in louisiana but he um called me and said yo i just ordered some praying mantis I'm like, where you get them from? He's like, the place that you sent me. I'm like, they ain't that lady did not mention praying mantis. <laughs> but I'm calling back like, yo, I want praying mantis. Because he was asking me how to get ladybugs. Man, I'm let like, me find out you gambling in the back. You got some fucking praying mantises and wasps and shit. Hey, man. You, fighting them. You do anything. <laughs> like roosters. <laughs> you, do any, <laughs> you do anything praying to protect mantis. your food, man. It's, it's a weird thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you yeah, I noticed. Stuff. I'm a rookie. I noticed like that something was eating up the leaves yeah, on my stuff. So it's a white moth that it's a white moth that um lays it lays its larva, and that's how these cutworms get on your um your stuff and they, they start eat, eating the because they, they start eat eating the, the leaves. Uh-huh. They start eating the leaves up, man. It look like a bacteria. It look like you have, and it's like these brown and yellow spots. But that's the larva. That's why you need your praying mantis, dog. But then prayer mantis, they see them lava moving, eat all that. Man, I need something from mosquitoes. It's a plant. Which one is it? I forget the name of the plant, but it's called a mosquito plant. You oh. Go, you go to it's oh, a, you shit. go to you go to okay. you go to um Lowe's or you can go to Home Depot and you go out there. It's a I, I think it's at Lowe's though. It says mosquito plant. Oh, I need that. Like <laughs> I need like that, indeed. especially when when all this COVID shit started happening. I bought this book that's all about like um, it's a dude that just talk about pandemics, epidemics, viruses, and all this. And he he had a whole chapter just listing like all the stuff that spreads via uh, mosquito, like malaria and dengue, Zika, mm. so on and so forth. And um, as it is, I I don't like mosquitoes. I think my kids are like 
allergic to them and shit because they just it like fucks them up and get you um a bird feeder front and back that helps with mosquitoes yeah bird birds, feeder birds eat birds that eat a ton of mosquitoes and flies no oh, shit. Okay. That's what they that's see. We learn in a day on the what did he say? Podcast. Like I have in my yard, I have um wolf spiders. Oh man, these spiders are crazy. What do they do? They 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 burrow themselves, but they start off real little, and then you see a hand on your on your floor. You like what the hell? They get really big. And, and they, what do they, they eat? They eat they eat everything. They just eat everything, but the birds eat them soon as like soon as you fresh cut the grass you see you just see all these birds walking around in my backyard just picking them just picking them off so you went and bought these wolf spiders or no they the just wolf spiders just oh. in the in the oh. ground it's two things that eat wolf spiders those red you seen those like they fat they red wasp they and they different from the regular wasp. they these huge they all just red and black they eat them they eat wolf oh, spiders shit. and the birds eat the wolf spiders but the birds dominate because they eat the wasps and the wolf spiders. I got to ask you. Uh, everybody knows, man. Anybody that knows of you, they know you're a hell of a storyteller. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this? Uh, Nick, got on booze. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have so many great stories. Um, I know that one probably went pretty viral. And it's just something about... That sentence, that phrase, uh, Mexicans got on boots, and the fact that it's a story from prison. And, um, <laughs> okay, so all that shit really happened? Yeah. It, oh. But it, it was crazy thing is, <laughs> Mexicans I, got on boots. I summarized it so, I guess I summarized okay. it really well because a riot is longer than 16 minutes. Like the whole episode, like, it was a day. It was a whole day. This is on uh, Ari Shafir's show from the Comedy Yeah, I did, I did okay. on Ari Shafir's show, but I had I had been telling the story to like my friends, like this this riot that you know I was in on this unit called Torres, mm -hmm. which is in Hondu, Texas, right outside of San Antonio, mm -hmm. and it was a long. It was like the longest day, man. We got gassed. We got gassed again. It was just like. It was just crazy because I remember I remember the whole thing. And I'm a rookie. I'm I'm just getting there. And this old cat was telling me, hey man, it don't look right. I'm like, why? He said, man, because the Mexican got them boots on. <laughs> and I was like, what does that even mean? That how did how do you even figure that that's a a sign that something's gonna go bad? He said, man, Mexicans come to this rec yard to play handball. They don't play in their boots, they play in sneakers. So if they got them boots on. Somebody it's go a problem. Down. It's a problem, and and it was, it 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 definitely was a whole situation. Oh my so, god! So so you, you like people say they know they have observational skills, but you continuously learn as you go through different situations. That's a, yeah, that's a hell of a skill to yeah. be able to just read and observe, so like read the room. That that um that that story has gone. It's really ridiculous, man. I still need to get some shirts printed up because people will still buy this shirt. This guy was, um, did you see the meme with this guy in at the? He buying some food and he just, he, I guess he was getting out of work and he had on boots. <laughs> and somebody took a picture of him and Mexican said, got "Mexican on got on boots." <laughs> so and then he 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 got out there and the man said he somebody tagged his response. He said, "I was just getting something to eat. I didn't know somebody was going <laughs> to take went a picture." <laughs> So oh it's, it's, a, it's another one about the protest. You talking about y'all think these pro these protests bad. Wait till the Mexican put the boots on. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like oh my it's God. the whole thing, man. So I, I and I was just telling the story. I didn't know it was gonna take off like that. Yeah, that's interesting, man. Um where did they film that Ari Shafir show? New York? Um, no, LA in in Cheetah Strip Club. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was it was very weird. Just hmm. in the strip. Well, club. you work with Comedy Central a lot, huh? Yeah, man. Um, 2013. Um, they asked me to be Raymond from the Improv. Asked me to be in this competition, um, for Comedy Central, and I was like, "No, nah, I'm cool. I don't really do competitions." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I got in the competition, you know, just to represent the club, and I was so I was really, really cavalier 
about it. I was like, I didn't care nothing about the if I won, if I lost, it didn't even matter. So I kept advancing and I remember Austin was the was the weirdest place. Austin, so I'm in Austin for like the second round and everybody that's on this particular round is from Austin. And they filming it. So you don't know who's gonna win that day. You they gonna send the, the footage to Comedy Central. Comedy Central's gonna pick the person that's gonna move on to the next round. So it's like five comics from Austin and then me. The Austin crowd clapped for everybody but me. I walked up and they was like, from Houston. And they was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I got on and I absolutely destroyed this room. And they was like, they was trying to hold it. And it was like, they couldn't oh, help it's, no it's, it, we can't. So they sent the, the footage, Comedy Central picked me to go on to Chicago. So I'm in Chicago, seven comics. I have no ambition with this like I'm, I'm not gonna win so it's no trip i'm outside talking to people and the, um the guy comes in and says hey ali they need you on stage and i tell the people like that i'm like yo hold on i gotta go in there and take a picture of the group with the group whatever i get up and it's just the host standing there and this other white guy and me and i was like i put my arm around both of them like <laughs> oh, okay who's taking the picture they was like, Ali, there's no picture. I'm like, so what, what y'all need me for? Ali, you have advanced to uh. the next round. I'm like, oh, okay. So I get to New York, which is the finals. And this lady who works for Comedy Central named Ann Harris, she was like, it's all these comics in there and they real antsy about what they doing. And I'm just sitting there. And she walks over to me, we talking. She says, just, just be honest. I just want to be honest with you. You don't give a shit about this competition, do you? And I said, not in the least bit. <laughs> like, I, I, I have, like, hey man, th I've been doing this a long time. This is not gonna make me or break me. I'm gonna just keep doing what I'm doing. So I win, and they named me Comedy Comedy Central's Comic to Watch 2013. But after that, I just Comedy Central just started calling me for everything. And so I, I think I was the first person to ever turn down like three, four shows in a row. And they're like, hey, you want to do Adam Devine's house party? I was like, no. He was like, but it's a, I'm like, why, no. why, why did you not? It didn't fit who I was. Like, it, that was like for some weird old kid type things. I'm like, you know, that's not, that's not me. And they asked me like, do like three more shows. I was like, no. And then, Ari show came up and this this guy named Eric Abrams was really adamant he was like yo we really want him to do this show they sent me all these clips and I watched it and it's like he was big on he's like no Ali's a storyteller he's going to crush this show Ari was like I don't know because he didn't know me mm -hmm. so I do this show and after the show Ari was looking at me like yo what 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 the fuck just happened because that was a killer story. And Eric was like, he didn't even do the story I thought he was going to do. Because he thought I was going to do Mitchell first. Mm. So, Comedy Central called me for something else. Then they Oh, so on the spot, you just went with whatever story you were feeling? Yeah. So, they didn't even know. Because I know, I, w I would assume, like, anything like that's produced like that, they want to know, they want to have, uh, we they have They wanted to know and... I gave them a list of stories that I was that I was potentially going to do, but they had no clue which mm -hmm. one I was going to do. They was really thinking I was going to do Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And right before I walked on, I was like, yo, Joe, I told my agent, Joe, I'm saying, man, I'm, I'm feeling like doing um, the prison ride. And Joe's like, hey, man, do what you want. Yeah. Did the story. Um, then I came back. I've, I've done it three times. Then, you know, they they not, they not back in... Um, rotation again so i did an album with comedy central damaged goods and then they called me to do the half hour the half hour special so i do the half hour and every executive from comedy central shows up to watch me perform and i was 
I just do. I'm just being me. And the, the guy, the president, came up to me and said, "We're gonna do some more work with you." And then I think the next Monday, they called me and said they wanted me to do a, a full hour special. I was like, "Cool." And I and and was like, he doesn't because other people was like, "Well, why is he not more excited?" And Anne, knowing me, she was like, "That was excited. He was excited. Mm -hmm. That's why he said it cool." Mm -hmm. And Anne was like, "We, I work with him like five times now. He does. This is his demeanor." And he was like, "Are you? Is he gonna? Is it gonna be good?" And Anne was like, "Watch." So then that's when I did the the, the special in prison, and they were all there, and um, the guys who was all antsy about it was like. We understand, cause like I, every time I walked on set, my face was like this, and then it was like action. Then I started, and it was like, oh shit, mm -hmm. okay. So he doesn't exert his energy unless it's time to perform. I'm like, why would I? Like, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't, it never makes sense to me. Yeah, cause it, like sometimes you you entertaining the the executives, you know, in a way. It's like you in it, oh hey, you trying to be like bubbly and entertaining people and then and then by the time you get up there. It's like I don't I I've, I've never understood that type of like I'm I go into everything and I maybe it's good for other people, but that's just who I am. Like I don't I don't want people to to think that I'm being something that's disingenuous from who I actually am. I'm not going to go around and be, oh, I'm happy-go-lucky. This is who I am until it's time to perform. Mm -hmm. Like, why am I exerting all this energy? I don't need to warm up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, not yeah. a basketball player. I don't need to lather up and get into a yeah. sweat. I'm I'm here now, like, with Def Jam. I was a season finale on Def Jam in 2008. And they was they kept trying to see was I okay. And DL was like, "Yo, man, just leave him alone." Mm -hmm. Cause they was like, "So are you are you okay? Are, you know, you need anything?" I was like, "Man, I'm cool, man." And so we sitting backstage, and everybody's all talking, and I'm just I'm just sitting there, and it's like, "Hey, I'll leave you next." I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> and I went out, and they give you like five minutes tops. But I stopped at 4.38 because I got a, two applause breaks and they was on their feet at 4.30. You know what I'm saying? So it eight seconds of me, you know, saying by whatever. I got a stand ovation. Then I just walked off and Russell Simmons and all, it was like, yo, Stan Latham, like, yo, just, what just happened? You like, said because normally it's five minutes. Like, they people yeah, like, do like five. five, you know, but I don't ever do – the time because I'm editing myself so they don't have anything to cut because I already I know what I'm going to do like the day before people the it was we were there for like three days so two the two days people were going up in LA in other comedy clubs running they set I never did that I was in my room I was enjoying what I was doing and I did my normal thing I called Dave Lawson right before I go on I tell him what I'm gonna do. We talk about it, and I go deliver. I don't. I don't. I, I'm. I'm not. I'm in. In one. In some aspects, I'm not normal when it comes to like storytelling. I don't need to be directed when it comes to what I actually do. Like, if I if I show up and it, and I know it's a storytelling show, and I show up, it's like. It depends on what I'm feeling that day. But whatever I'm feeling that day is probably going to be more than what you bargain for. Because I every time anybody's ever seen me on TV, it, I've, I've been pissed off one time about TV was the all-star um, comedy, all-star thing produced by um, these the people. Shack? It's not the Shaq one? No, it was produced by these other people. It, it was shot in um, Las Vegas doing the, um, the awards. And it was... Robert Townsend was the honoree, and it was D.L. Hughley, Bill Bellamy, George Wallace, Tony, um, Tony Roberts, um, Ed Griffin, um, Gina Yashram, Rob Stapleton, and Rudy Rush was all on the show. 
um, everybody has 11 minutes. George Wallace went up. Bill Bellamy went up. Then they, and they, George Wallace was warming up because he missed the Vegas, and they, you know, just getting him, getting the crowd ready. He just came out there talking shit. Then Bill was the host, and Tony Roberts was supposed to go first. So there's all these celebrities in the audience. Where Tony Roberts was supposed to go first, and then I was going at the Tony Roberts. They came and switched the order because they felt like I couldn't follow Tony Roberts. And DL, I remember DL leaned out of his room and said, oh shit, y'all just made Ali mad. <laughs> and dude was like, how you figure that? He said, who just switched up the order? He's like, we switched it up because we felt like, he said, he gonna be pissed. And y'all gonna pay for that shit, I guarantee you. And Tony Rob, um, Tony Rob was like, no nah, man, he fine behind me. Like, nah, we just gonna switch it up. And I remember Rob Staples was like, I'm concerned about who finna follow him after this shit. Cause he is going to be on fucking fire. <laughs> so they came and told me the lineup was switched and I was just looking, I was like, okay. Tony Roberts told me this after he got, after I got off stage, he said, I was standing by the producer. The per the other producer called from the thing over the headphones and said, "What are we gonna do now? The first comic just got a fucking standing ovation." And DL leans out his room to like, "What y'all thought it was gonna do? Y'all the fucking made him mad, and he's finna go out there and be technically sound." And I was from. From the time I walked out, I was pissed. I was pissed. I'm like, how fucking dare y'all think that I can't follow somebody? Like, all right, who finna follow this shit? I went out, standing ovation. Like, two. Not one, but two. Everybody got 11 minutes, remember? When the show came out, they had edited me down to four minutes in 47 seconds. I was literally fucking pissed. So out of 11 minutes? I And I watched the whole show. Everybody else got their 11 minutes. Mm. And I said, I never work with that producer again. I, I don't think me and, because Bill was, the ex, Bill Bellamy was the executive producer. Me and Bill didn't talk for like two months. Like I was, I was fucking pissed. And just imagine, I didn't talk to Bill for two months, and I was the host of his Ladies Night Out tour at the time. Oh wow! Like I, I got, I told him, hey, you can take me off them dates. I'm not fucking with y'all because y'all made me, y'all made me look fucked up. And I know, and I, everybody know what I did that night. So they chopped it down, super chopped the short. shit, down. and then they showed the standing ovation, but it, it was so beat up, like it was like it's like they manufactured it. You know what I'm saying? And I just looked at this shit and I was like, yo, I never, like, and I don't even talk, I don't speak to that promoter. I People ask me, they ask me about him. I won't say nothing at all because I know I'm not going to say shit good. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? But I told him he can go fuck himself. Like, I've said that to him several times. Like, I'm, I'm to the point, like, I want a physical, I want something physical to happen. But I know they, I know I've been blackballed before <laughs> over the same shit. So I already know. But it's like I represent, I represent a state. I represent a place. I represent the South. So I think that anytime I do well, it's for the city. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why I've always made them come here. HBO came here and shot with me. Showtime came here and shot with me. Um, Comedy Central came here and shot with me. So it's like it gives light to the city. So when I'm on TV, I feel like everybody is on TV. Like in my mind, I always when I do interviews, people people listen to like, yo, it's more me mm -hmm. in Houston, in Texas, period. But I'm tired of people trying to put me behind Bill Hicks and Ralphie May. I'm like, yo, man, I'm I'm one of the best in the country, period. So why would not be one of the best in my own place? Like it bothers me when people start mentioning comics start mentioning their influences. I'm like, oh shit. Well, who who are some of your influences? Um, Dick Gregory, um, Chappelle, DL, um, 
Franklin, Jai, Don Rickles, Carol Burnett, um, Rodney, um, Rodney Dangerfield. You know, I have a, I have a Phyllis Dilla, Moms Mavely. Like I have a, a, a very eclectic list of people who yeah. I, I watched as far as standing. Because you know, when I'm watching stand up, you know, it was the Carol Burnett show mm -hmm. when I'm when I'm growing up in Hee Haw mm -hmm. and, and things like that that I found funny. You know, Benny Hinn. Benny Hill, man. Yeah, Benny Hill. Yeah. Um, George, <laughs> dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a George Jefferson, Archie Bunker, all these people were fucking hysterical to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I know we got to take a break. I can see it. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they, they were hysterical to me. And so that's where my influences came from. It wasn't just the Richard Pryors, you know. And, you know, so Cosby is like a huge influence over me, you know. And um, even though me and him don't get along but um like you, you met him and no no not not this next person i'm about to mention oh, okay we don't get along okay at all um paul mooney we don't we don't get along something he, went down yeah he asked me to count the room one time and i was like huh he's like yeah i want you to count the room not my job when i asked you to count the room i said if you address me like that again, I'm gonna slap shit out your old ass. <laughs> and then I called my DL, my mentor. So I called DL. DL was like, "Don't slap Paul Mooney." Ali, <laughs> Ali, Ali. Don't. He's a legend. Don't slap Paul Mooney. I was like, "You could tell him you gonna slap him." Yeah, man. He was like, DL did not want me to slap Paul Mooney. I was like, I gonna slap the shit out of Paul Mooney. I was like, Yo, man. W were you featuring, hosting? I was the feature, and the mother asked me to count the room. Man, you better go fuck yourself. I might have asked a feature to count the room in the past, and I, maybe I almost got my my, my ass slapped <laughs> <laughs> and didn't know it. But was the feature there with you? That you was like, you brought him with you? I, I just I roll with a, you know, I'm cool with all my. The, the cats I roll with. Uh, you cool with all the cats you roll with? Yeah, yeah, I'm cool with all the cats. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the cats I roll with. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We're going to have to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. We're back. Ali Sadiq, LOL, Comedy Club San Antonio all weekend. Two shows Thursday, two Friday, two Saturday. Oh, no. One show Thursday. One Thursday. Two shows Friday. Two Saturday, Saturday, no show Sunday. Sunday show is in Houston at the Houston Improv. Houston Improv, Father's, Father's Day. Day show, three o'clock. I mean, I gotta, I gotta get back early, which I, you know, when you in San Antonio, you kind of want to chill and just hang out. Why is it hotter in San Antonio by um, the um, the mall over there on the side where the um, what is that? What is that joint? Um, what is the place? The, the theater? No. Uh, um, the Alamo. Okay. Right by the Alamo, across from Ripley, believe it or not, or mm -hmm. whatever. It's fucking hotter there than it. Am I the only person that ever noticed that it, the temperature changes right there? Shit, I don't know, man. All I know is it's <laughs> Houston. I, I went to college in San Antonio, but I, I just know Houston is extra muggy. SFA? No, I went to uh, Trinity. Oh, you went to Trinity? Yeah, Trinity, yeah, yeah. I performed at Trinity one yeah? year. Yeah. Yeah, man, shit. Where at yeah. in the auditorium? In the too? auditorium. Did you did you do like a college uh, run? No, nah, Trinity. Had, they wanted me. I've done a lot of colleges. It mm -hmm. wasn't just a run. Over the years, I've done a lot of colleges. But I I remember performing at Trinity, and I remember that was the first time I took Keisha Hunt mm -hmm. on the road. With me, yeah, we we did Trinity College. It was me, Keisha, and um, Rodney. I think Rodney Bickham. Mm. Yeah, I don't even know how that even happened, but yeah. I think it was Rodney Bigel. <laughs> Shit. I, I, I used to uh, DJ the frat parties and the sorority parties and stuff, and sometimes they wouldn't book me for shit. Like, like book me for, like, like anytime I'd be going through the, uh, like, by the student center, and I see them having, like, a little, some organization book some DJ out of the phone book, and I'd be like, hey, man, you on my turf, bro? Like, what the fuck going on, man? You all run this shit. Uh, well, you, was you, you were never in our record pool? You know what? With a, players. Was, yes, yes. Yeah, I was. You know, I ran the record pool. I had no idea. I like if in if you got your record shipped to you or you picked them up on 20 uh, 6420 Richmond. Then that's probably that's that might be where I first met you. It had man. to be. Because I because it was a lot of cats that was coming from San Antonio, um, Longview, 
Dallas. Yeah, mm-hmm. I ran the record. I ran that, the record pool. That was like the record pool in Texas. See, we got some youngsters listening, millennials and shit. All they know is about is pull up the cell phone and, and click the song. Yeah. But back in the day, you has you had to get wax. And then when I got in the in the music game, you know, it wasn't just email a file to DJs. It's like you had yeah. to mail out wax and uh, and get it to the record pools and I mean that's really that's literally how I started um have getting my crates together so that I had enough records to be able to DJ a party or um, do a mixtape and I started rapping on some of those beats and I had college radio man that's how I started and all this shit <laughs> that's how GT and Steve Knight started KTSU um college radio oh, shit. yeah cuz I man I literally used to it all day I would put boxes would come in from all these record labels and I would put two records in each box Mm -hmm. and send it to people and yeah so people would have records and so and then I I became an A&R because people would bring their records in and I would have to listen to them and the worst thing like yo I I, I was the worst because of my face I like people had a whole crew in a room listening to the record and I got to send a record if I like it I'll send it to the major and I'm just sitting there listening and people dancing and I'm just sitting there and they're like, man, what you think? Man, I, I didn't like none of this shit. Wow. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like, did, did you see me bob my head at any time? Damn. And we literally picked all of the jams from, for, um, a lot of people record, a light, like everything from paid in full with, um, uh, had a, and, because GT, GT, Steve Nice, Walter D was breaking these records on. Mm-hmm. So if I didn't like it, they wouldn't play it. Like I, I liked a lot of the the southern records, but some people they are still pissed at me. Like he didn't like our shit. I was like, and you didn't make it. So I think I was right. A lot of like rec shop stuff. Uh, and oh, we we yeah. picked we picked a lot of rec shop because yeah. Floyd was my Floyd was my people. Man. Dixon, mm-hmm. yeah. Picked a lot of his. My buddy used to produce for them, Sali. Yeah. You know Sali? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He did, like, when I got my major distribution. He did Gotti. He did stuff with Gotti, tight eyes. Big Pokey. Yeah. Uh, A lot of people, Paul Wall. Um, When I got my major distribution for an album, um, when they gave me the recording budget, I I was like, I need to find Sali. Like, where's Sali? Carnival Beats. And I, I, I literally pretty much lived in Austin like for weeks at a time because that they were out of like Luling and Kyle, Texas. Mm-hmm. And at the time they did all the Swisher House and stuff. All of Mike Jones was on fire. Uh he did still tipping. And um but yeah, but speaking of key players and all that, Steve Nice did some mixes on the radio that blew my mind. Like that I still remember to this day. He took uh Phil Collins, uh I can feel it yeah. coming yeah. in. And he put that Buster Rhymes beat behind Dun, dun, oh yeah dun, dun, dun. i was like oh shit what the fuck is this Steve, the crazy Steve fucking shit was, like the key player out volume one and two we had some great rec we had some great records on there man um this was this is the time that we broke the common record we broke um and we broke so many records man i remember bringing tony touchdown here common was it the there's some time mm-hmm. that you need we broke that some. Mm-hmm. We broke, man. We it's so it, we had so many play. We broke almost all of the um, all of the juvenile. We broke all of the um, the no limit stuff. Like man, we we had so many platinum and gold plaques in our office. It was ridiculous. Between GT and Steve, it was ridiculous. And really, it was you uh, picking the shit behind the scenes. <laughs> man, it was a lot of hot, lot of hot records, man. A lot of hot records and i remember bringing these guys down on promotional tour like i i brought um i remember we was running this club called cardi's mm-hmm. on 59 and the three week the five week lineup that we had was so ridiculous that the city was like yo why did he know all these people so it was raw digger raw digger slim it just dropped his album with the neptune so raw digger slim thug um then we, we right after that it was Tony Touching Common, right and then right after Tony Touching Common we brought Black Rob, and people was like, "Was that over there by Rec Shot? Where was this club at? Cardi's? 
Vincent and 59. Like, as soon as you get off Vincent, you go under the freeway, it was right there, Catacomb. It, it was some weirdo, like, strip club there okay. in the front of it. Okay. Um, I forget the name of that strip club, but it was right in the corner. And we was bringing these people. People was like, yo, man, we brought Fairmont. Um, we just kept bringing all these big artists. And they was like, yo, man, what is the deal? They're like, you know he run the record pool. <laughs> and they get and he his his best friend, you know, me and G been best friends like thirty years now. And Steve, we you know, this Texas Southern, you know, the pride of Texas Southern at this point. And he was man, we was just having a good time. And then I was still doing stand up. I just started and I was a record breaker at the time that's awesome man <laughs> the, the, the golden time. era man i, I, I we've been knowing each other for a long time i mean the we've same been, type of yeah. circles I, i'm like gt i remember meeting up with him at like the gas station off of beltway like over between um 288 you know like pearland area like for different things uh, i think i did a remix i rapped on something of his he he had a remix i think it was like the h-o-u-s-t-o-n and stuff I like was, that i was the in that video that houston video we was we was talking about it the other day and that was the last time lonnie mack lonnie mack was in there with his sons and he was like so I'm do, we doing this video with lonnie mack and he literally turns to me and says um i don't know if he was at that video shoot and i was like um i was a fucking stylist on the video shoot I was ironing everybody, and I was already on Comic View and all this shit, but it's my friend. I'm ironing everybody's jackets and shirts and shit for the video. He was like, you did style a goddamn video. I was like, yeah, fuck you talking about was I there? Like, yeah, yeah I was there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I ironed your fucking shirt, yeah. yeah. I was there, I'm the reason nobody had wrinkles. You know what I'm saying? And every, I'm like, man, I've been in every video shoot that you've ever been on. I like, I damn it directed the one with him beat the trunk up because G was like being real stiff. I'm like, yo, what's not, what's not going to happen is this is your song, so I need you in front of Slim Thug and um, uh, Calion, Killer Calion, need you in the front. He playing the back. I'm like, but it's your song. Mm -hmm. And like, G, you remember, I know this TV shit. Like, I, I'm already on TV at this point. So I'm like, come to the front. And because I was in Mike Jones' video. I was in my, I was doing a lot like a skit, right? Yeah, yeah. I was I was doing a lot with with um, Dr. T, mm -hmm. who was shooting a lot Everybody's of videos. Everybody's videos at a time. So yeah. I was in Mike Jones. I was in both his videos, um, flossing, and um, back then they didn't know me. And any part that anybody ever seen me in, I wrote myself. Like they just gave me like Lee. What you what you think about? This? Give me a minute. Mm -hmm. Then I then I write I write. I've been in a lot of videos. I'm like. Three or four GT, I mean, um, zero videos. I'm in all the GT videos besides um, the HO, the Houston video, because I was um, behind the scenes. Styles. Matter of fact, I'm in the video when the video starts with the barbershop. In the barbershop, me come in, me talking about this girl, and then he goes in. Um, the first when I, when I last seen her, she was mean to then Katrina. I, I I'm like, yo, I was in the goddamn video as well. Like <laughs> ironing, ironing. <laughs> like, he's like weird, man. Yo, man, thank you for stopping by. It's, oh, man, it's great to mine. just catch up memory lane. Um, can't wait to see all the amazing things you're gonna do to put the city even more on the map. You know, because Houston's a shit, Texas is a shit. You better believe it. This is where we're at. Uh, LOL Comedy Club all weekend Sunday matinee show at the Houston Improv. And uh, check your website. What's your uh, inst Instagram and website? My Instagram. Everything is Ali Sadiq. A-L-I-S-I-D-D-I-Q. So that's whether... Oh, Twitter is the only thing that's different. It's Ali underscore speaks on Twitter. I think that was the first thing I had. You know, that's crazy. I've been doing stand-up longer than any of this shit even existed. Yeah, before, yeah, all this like, stuff. Twitter, Twitter, <laughs> Facebook. I, I was doing music MySpace. before MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when MySpace came along. But uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Appreciate you guys for listening. Make sure you follow Ali Sadiq online, and we'll talk to you next episode. Peace. Peace.